Hey everybody, Darren Voros here. I'm closing on a new property next week that I'm going to be adding to my portfolio. And instead of going the traditional route of using a big financial institution, I'm going to be using private lending to acquire this property. So I wanted to walk you through the process on how private lending works. I also want to explain why I chose private lending in this situation instead of using one of the big financial institutions. One of the biggest struggles for investors is finding money to fund their deals. And one of the reasons that a lot of novice investors stall is because they're relying on bank financing to be able to purchase properties. If you're relying on bank financing in order to move your business forward, ultimately you're gonna hit a roadblock. So if you know how to successfully use private capital, this will be hugely beneficial to your business. Before we get into it today, if you haven't done so already, you can subscribe to my channel. You can also hit the notification bell and please feel free to leave me comments and questions below. And without further ado, let's get into it. You may be thinking to yourself, why would I want to use private financing if I had access to a major financial institution and borrowing money at a lower interest rate? And this is a great question that often has a somewhat complex answer. It's not always easy to get an approval from a major financial institution, especially as you begin to build your portfolio and your debt service ratios may be a little off. You also may need money for a very short period of time, maybe three to six months, and most financial institutions will not be interested in loaning money on that short of a term. The other wrinkle that's presented itself recently is that a lot of major financial institutions will not look at a refinance within the first year of owning that property. So if you've acquired a property with the intent of buying it, renovating it, put tenants in place and refinancing it, a lot of major financial institutions will not look at that within the first year of owning that property. Another major factor for using private lending is it's easier to get financing once you already own a property versus looking to acquire a property. For instance, if I go to the bank and ask for a loan, the conversation often goes like this. I think I'm gonna be able to renovate the property for this much money. Then I think it's gonna be worth this much money. And then I think I'm gonna be able to rent it out for this much money. Imagine flipping the script on the bank and going to them when you already own the property, you've already completed the renovation and you know what that costs. You know what the value's worth based on a recent appraisal by somebody who's approved by the bank. And you know what your tenants are gonna be paying you because they're already in the property and they're paying rent every single month. That's a very different conversation with the bank than the other way around. But before we get to that point, we need to be able to acquire the property, do the renovation, put the tenants in place, and that's why we need access to private financing. So where do we find private lenders? Private lenders can be found from a variety of sources. The most common way to find private lenders is generally through an investor-focused mortgage broker. These mortgage brokers will be used to working with private lenders, both on the private lending side and the private borrowing side. In this case, I actually found my private lender through my lawyer. A real estate-specific lawyer is used to working with these kinds of transactions, so they may have a pool of investors that are used to doing private lending. There are also many investment networks across the country, and I belong to one of those networks, so I often find my private lenders inside of that network. And last but not least, you may be able to find private lenders on the internet. In this situation, I would encourage you to do significant due diligence on the company you're borrowing the money from to make sure they're a legit organization. Once you've sourced your private lender and you've got the transaction you need the private funds for, the next thing you want to look at is what qualifications are the private lenders going to be looking at. In most situations, private lenders look at very different qualifications than a major financial institution would. The good news is it's generally a simplified process because you're gonna be borrowing money at a higher interest rate. The qualifications for working with a private lender are significantly different than they are when you're working with a major financial institution. They're first gonna look at the term of the loan and that could include the amount of time you need that money for, the actual dollar amount you're looking at, and whether that's a closed or open term loan as it relates to the repayment of the principal amount. Private lenders will also look at the term on how the money is paid out. Some private lenders would prefer that the interest is paid in a lump sum all at the beginning of the transaction. Some lenders prefer a monthly payment of interest and some will allow you to defer the interest until the end of the loan when you're paying back the principal amount. The private lender is also gonna be looking at what position they're in in terms of liens on the property. For instance, if there's already a mortgage registered on that property and another private lender was coming in to put a loan on that property as well, that new loan would be in second position. In the case of a default, the first lender would have priority in order to be able to recover their funds. After that, then the second lender would be able to come in and try to recover their funds if there were any available. And you can see why this is really important for private lenders that they wanna look at what's the loan to value on the property and also what position they're in on the loan. Let me give you an example of how loan to values work when there's a first and second mortgage on a property. Let's say our property was worth $500,000 and we had a first mortgage of $250,000. 
That would be 50% loan to value on the first mortgage. A second mortgage could be placed on the property for an additional $150,000. This would bring our loan to value up to 80% on that property because we'd have $400,000 registered against a $500,000 property. And it really depends on how comfortable your lender is in terms of where they want the loan to values to be. Let me walk you through the recent process that I went through in order to be able to secure private lending. So the first thing that I did is I reached out to my contact and went over the details of the deal with her. From there, she put it out to her pool of investors to see who might be interested. She then came back to me with the best offer that suited my needs. And at that point, I had the opportunity to review the offer and decide if I wanted to move forward or not. Once I decided to move forward, she asked me to submit the necessary documents that the lender had asked for. In this case, they only asked for the articles of incorporation for my company and the details of the subject property. We then ordered appraisals for the subject property and my second piece of collateral, which was my condo. The appraisals came back at the value we had disclosed to the lender. At that point, they sent over the commitment. I signed the document and sent it back. And prior to closing, I'll sit down with my lawyer. The lender will sit down with their lawyer, go over the documents, sign where necessary and advance the funds. We will take the funds for the specified term. Once the transaction is complete, we will pay back the original loan amount and then close out the transaction. So what are the costs to be able to acquire a property via private financing? There are four major categories you're gonna to have to look at. They are the interest rate, the lender fee, the appraisal fees, and the legal fees. So let me walk you through the numbers on the property we are about to acquire. We are purchasing this property for $425,000. We've asked for a loan from our private lender of $215,000. That's essentially about 50% loan to value. I've seen private lending go up as high as 90, 95, 100% loan to value, but it really depends on what you're putting up as collateral and how comfortable that private lender feels with the transaction. Because I don't need that much capital in this transaction, we only ask for a 50% loan to value in order to be able to secure a lower interest rate. So in this scenario, there's no other mortgage registered on the property. So in this case, the lender is in first position. The lender fee in this case was 2% of the loan value, so that works out to $4,300. In some situations, you'll have to pay this all up front. In other situations, it can be split. You'll pay some at the beginning and some at the end. And in other scenarios, you can pay it all at the end. It really depends on your private lender and what they're looking for. The interest rate we're gonna pay on this loan amount is 7.99% interest. This works out to a yearly interest rate of $17,178.50 or monthly at $1,431.54. The term of the mortgage is a six month closed term mortgage with an option to extend another six months with 30 days notice to close out that mortgage. So this means if I close out the mortgage early before that six month term is over, I'll pay the higher of either a three month interest penalty or the remainder of the loan that's left in that six month term. The legal fees in this scenario are $1,499 that I pay to my lawyer to be able to draft the mortgage commitment and the lender's legal documents. In some cases, the lenders prefer that their own lawyer draws up the mortgage commitment and their legal documents. There's also the lender's legal fees that I will have to pay, which could include setup fees if if my lender wants to use his RRSPs as capital in this situation. The lender's legal fees in this case were $2,299 and all of the values I'm quoting you are plus HST because this transaction is taking place here in Ontario. There's a $77 registration fee to place a second mortgage on my condo, which ends up being the second piece of collateral in this transaction. And the final piece is the appraisals which need to be done on the subject property that we're acquiring and my condo that I'm putting up as collateral to verify the values that we've submitted to the lender. The appraisal fees in this case were $250 per property, which totals up to $500. So the total amount to be able to borrow this money for a six month term is $17,767.99. This might seem like a crazy amount of money to pay to borrow money for six months, but when you look at the overall costs on the project and the projected profit, you'll see why it makes sense. As I mentioned earlier, we were able to acquire this property from a wholesaler for $425,000. Our borrowing costs that we just went through were $17,767. Our renovation costs on this project are projected at $80,000. We're gonna be putting in a legal basement apartment in this property and doing some cosmetic renovations on the main and second floor. The land transfer tax that we have to pay when we acquire this property is around $5,000 and the carrying costs to carry this property for the six months while we're renovating it are going to work out to around $3,300. So all in after six months, our costs are projected to be $531,569. My plan on this project is to use the flip to joint venture strategy. And if you haven't seen that video, you can check it out right here. And right now I plan to sell the property to the joint venture partner at $570,000. So my total profit on this transaction in six months time is just under $40,000. And I plan to own a portion of this property moving forward. So if we go back to that cost to borrow at around seventeen thousand dollars now you can see why it makes sense for me to use private capital in order to be able to acquire this property because the possibility is there to make forty thousand dollars in profit in six months 
own a portion of the property moving forward and also have my partner step in and finance the transaction and then I can pay out my private lender. So this is why I like to use private lending in order to be able to acquire this property because if I'd gone the traditional route and looked at a major financial institution, I may not have been able to acquire this property and put it in my portfolio. If you like the idea of using private lending, you can hit the like button below. You can also subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell, and please feel free to leave comments and questions below for me. You can also follow me on Facebook, Instagram, or check out my website at darrenvoros.com. And with that, I'll say thank you guys so much for watching. I wish you the best of success on your real estate investing journey, and I look forward to hearing your success stories very soon.